Good morning. Welcome to the Covenant Church for worship this morning, and welcome to those uh, listening or viewing online. Uh, we, we love you, we, we miss you, and we look forward to a time of, of gathering fully back together. Um, and we know that will happen soon. It's Pentecost today, a celebration of the birth of the church. So many years ago, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ upon the church. Uh, come, Holy Spirit, come again, renew, uh, reform us again and again. You may feel overwhelmed in this time. Um, there's no reason to fear or be overwhelmed by the, the shutdown or, you know, the chaos that is happening in the last week. You know, things just keep overlapping. There's grief and loss, and it can be very overwhelming. But the Lord is present. The Lord is a just judge. I think most importantly for us today in our worship and in the weeks ahead, is to be overcome by the Lord's presence. You know, God is holy. He is worthy. His Son, Jesus Christ, the wor worthy is the Lamb of God. So we bow before Him. We, we humble ourselves in worship before Almighty God. May we see His glory. May we even feel the weight of His glory here this morning. Because the Lord is in his holy temple. And we worship him. We praise him. So glad you're joining us for worship. We say, God, the Holy Spirit, come. Come, be poured out upon us. You're welcome here. Come flood this place.
at our call. Oh God, how great you are. On the first day of the week, we commemorate your creation of the world and all that is in it. Thank you for the light which traced us morning by morning and for that greater light which shines in Jesus Christ. Oh God, how great you are. Again, on the first day of the week, you raised Jesus from the dead. O oh God, how great you are. Again, on the first day of the week, you sent your spirit on your disciples. Do not, not deprive us of your spirit, but renew us through him day by day. Amen. Amen. Join me in prayer, please. O oh, El Shaddai, our God Almighty, how great you are. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are holy, holy, holy. 
Holy Spirit, we come today before you. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for the great promise fulfilled through the Holy Spirit that you desired so greatly to dwell with your people that you promised to send the Holy Spirit. And you fulfilled that promise so that each one of us may have a part of you. You are a God who never leaves his people. You are a God who never fails his people. You alone deserve all of our praise. You deserve all of earth and heaven's praise, Lord, for you are worthy. In your goodness, you pour out your blessing on your children. You flood us with your affections because, oh, how you love us so. You have marked us as your own and sealed us as your own. In your great love for us, you made a way through your son, Jesus. You spared nothing for us. So let all of your creation on earth join together and praise you in loud, mighty worship. For you are the great God Almighty. You are the name above all names. And nothing can stand against you. Everything must bow to the precious name of Jesus. So church, let's join together and praise our God Almighty with this prayer that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning. Okay, our first reading is from John 20, verses 19 through 23, and that's found on your Pew Bible on page 883. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you receive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Our next meeting, a reading is from Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21. It's only a couple pages over on page 885. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the great, the, excuse me, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians and Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we 
We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We give thanks every day with open arms for the work the Lord has done for us. Um, our offering plate is up front. We just ask if you're giving to bring it up and drop it off. There will be no one collecting. And for those outside, even myself, I give online. So those who don't know how to give, go on our website at govchurchthomason.org and you may do that. Thank you so much as we proceed. morning. Would you pray with me, please? Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. 
come and fill this place. Speak to our hearts the message that you have for us. And Holy Spirit, be the breath in my lungs, be the words in my mouth, so that all of our eyes are on you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, our household is filled with superheroes and warrior princesses. We're surrounded by Marvel and Disney superheroes and, of course, all the princess stuff galore. When my children enter into this imagination land, they fight brave battles just like their superheroes do on TV. I remember as a child dressing up in my Wonder Woman costume, jumping from one piece of furniture to another, and I never had a thought of the possibility that a superhero could fail. Now as an adult, at times I stop and watch my children as they play, and I wonder, do they really know how invincible they are because of Jesus Christ? Their tongues are sharper than any sword they'll ever know. Do they know that their tongue has the power to drive away the enemy in just one name? The name above all names, Jesus. And the shields that they play with, do they know that there really is a true shield? The shield of God. God, as our shield, engulfs us and protects us from everything and anything that tries to harm us. In fact, when the enemy closes in, there is an army of angels standing tall in full armor, ready to def defend and protect us at any cost. If we could just see ourselves through that lens, where would we be? But of course, in all of the superhero play, reality kicks in, and their land of imagination gets interrupted because somebody inevitably gets hurt. And then I have to come out in my superhero gear and act like Wonder Woman to break up the fight. <laughs> but it's in that interruption where there is such a valuable opportunity. But interruption is difficult for us to handle. They never seem to arise at convenient moments. It's usually when we're focused on something else or multitasking or even in the most difficult moments of our lives. And as much as I would like to take the opportunity to soak up the goodness, the, the interruption, chaos is usually erupting at the same time. God has always been in the business of interrupting. He's done it from the very beginning of time. When Adam was moping around the garden because he was lonely, God interrupted and created Eve right from him because it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. God interrupted a man named Abram and decided to bless him with innumerable descendants. God interrupted Abraham's life, totally picked him up, transplanted him into a foreign land. God interrupted a young shepherd boy caring for his flock when he chose David to be the king of Israel. David was the least of all the sons in his family, but God interrupted now these are just a few stories that we're familiar with in the Old Testament. And when Jesus came, those interruptions continued, but in a different way. When Jesus came into this world, he interrupted Mary and Joseph's life. Nothing about her conception or pregnancy was planned or proper in the eyes of her culture. But God was more concerned of the hearts and the needs of his people, so he provided a way. Jesus interrupted 12 men's lives, calling them as his disciples for three years. They had families and careers, friends, but he interrupted because those were the chosen ones who were going to spread the good news to all the nations of the earth, to even us, the Gentiles. Jesus interrupted because people's souls and eternity were at stake. Jesus interrupted the plans of Satan and death itself when he rose again. When the, what the enemy meant to steal, Jesus interrupted to bring life. Now these are a lot of examples, but I didn't even scratch the surface of all the times that God interrupted th throughout the Bible. But these interruptions, they transformed people's lives. They transformed the world, and they changed even the religions and philosophies of the world. Now let's fast forward a bit to Pentecost. 
because today we're celebrating the joyous day of Pentecost, the beginning of the church with over 3,000 people coming to accept Jesus. Their lives and their destinations changed all in one day. But Pentecost was an interruption. Before there was Pentecost, the Jews celebrated Shavuot, or the Festival of Weeks. This was a time where the people celebrated God giving the law, written on the tablets, the ones that Moses brought down from the mountain. A time that God's law became their covenant, and he marked the Israelites as his chosen people. It was a covenant for Israel as a whole to receive. And it was a joyous day. The, joys the Jews continue to celebrate the festival of weeks every year. Part of this celebration is making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. This is one of the three festivals that require the Jews to go to Jerusalem. So at this time, 50 days after Passover, they would have been in the upper room celebrating the festival of weeks. Little did they know that the Holy Spirit would come and interrupt them shortly. When the Holy Spirit came, he changed the relationship God's people would have with him. The relationship would change from a covenant with a group of people to a covenant with each individual person. The veil was torn, the law was fulfilled, and the promise of the great helper, the Holy Spirit, had arrived. The prophecy of Joel had come alive. God was pouring out his spirit on all people. The Gentiles would now have a personal relationship with God as well. The way was opened for all of us. God would set up his temple within every person who accepted the Son. Now every believer could always be in the inner court because of the Holy Spirit. Christianity started a true relational movement that drastically changed the world's religions and the world itself. In the Holy Spirit's interruptions, we gain something that we never could have through the law. It is only because of Jesus. Before Jesus came, the Jews were the chosen to represent God, but their hearts went astray and they could not fulfill the mission. They broke their covenant, the laws of God. They chased after idols and worldly ways. And when Jesus came, he changed how the mission would be carried out. It changed so that individuals would represent him and spread his message on earth. The covenant was now personal to each individual. So what might the Holy Spirit be interrupting you with? Our world has been totally turned upside down. God has stripped away everything that once was comforting to us and replaced it with our vulnerability and uncertainty. He's given us an opportunity to cast away our idols and focus on him and him alone. He's made us have to deal with emotions that we really don't want to deal with. Fear has crept into many. So what is God trying to teach us in this interruption? It's not convenient. People are sick. People are dying. Businesses are closed. Incomes are reduced or non-existent. People are struggling in every aspect of their lives. Fear is always at our doorstep. But fear is a powerful emotion. It exposes the weaknesses that we try so hard to hide. It drives us to do crazy things, things we would never normally do. But it also propels us to have the courage and boldness to do things we would not normally do. Fear and heartache can be beautiful things that we give to the Lord. When we come to a place where we can let Jesus in, the Holy Spirit comes and breathes new life in these areas. And when he breathes new life, healing starts. Out of the difficult, painful times, the Holy Spirit can birth a new ministry, a purpose. He takes the ashes of death and exchanges them for the beauty of life. Romans 8.28 tells us that God works everything for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. Well, we have all been called, and we all have a purpose. 
in our weakness and pain, there is purpose. There is hope for what God will do, not what he can do, because he can do anything and everything, but what will he do? The word promises us that he will work it all together for good. So what if this interruption of our lives is for good? We are seeing people doing amazing things. We are seeing God and his creation at work. People are paying for strangers' groceries and dinners and coffees just because. People are sewing masks like crazy so that we all can have one. We are seeing an amazing side of God's creation. God is dealing with the hearts of his creation. He is shaking everything that can be shaken, but not just for the believers, for everyone. God is doing something good. He is dealing with the hearts of everyone in this world all at the same time. But some of this shaking looks ugly. What God is using to change us, Satan wants to use to destroy us. We've seen communities come together, and now we are seeing communities torn apart because of hate. God looks at us and he sees our, his creation. And if God is in us, then why do we not look at others the same? We must remember that even though people will reject Jesus, they are still God's creation. They were created in the image of God, and that means that God's goodness is inside of them. Now is not the time to be silent. We must stand up to the wrongs, to the injustices that people are facing. We must use our voices to bring God's light to these wrongs. We must stand up for justice and walk in love because we have the power to drive away the hate. I know there's a much bigger picture, a much bigger plan to what God is doing in the midst of all of this, and we can't see that right now. But we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. Jesus tells us in Matthew 17, 20, that we only need a mustard seed of faith. So how big is your faith? Because we have a lot of mountains to move. In the wise words of Master Yoda, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. We laugh at the reference, but the words ring very true. And we're not the only ones who have dealt with fear or uncertainty or injustices. In, James, in John 20 from our reading today, we see that the disciples were locked in a room because of fear. Those disciples we remember as warriors for Christ, they too wrestled with fear. Their whole world was turned upside down. Their plans and their dreams, they had all been interrupted and everything came to a screeching halt. Sound familiar? They barricaded themselves in a room out of fear. That may be familiar too. But Jesus appears and his very presence drove away their fear. His very presence encouraged them and lifted them up. It reminded them that Jesus always worked it out for good. When Jesus was teaching the 5,000, he interrupted his teaching to feed the people. He needed to address their physical needs. He needed to show them that he would always provide everything they needed exactly when they needed it. When Jesus and the disciples were in the boat and the storm raged on, the disciples were filled with fear. But Jesus interrupted the storm to drive away their fear. He had to address their emotions and show them that he cares about their emotional state, even when overtaken with fear and doubt, emotions that are not of him. But he showed the disciples that there is no emotion too big for him. And when Lazarus died and Jesus interrupted a funeral and grieving, that was awful in the sight of their culture. But he interrupted so that God could cement their faith while they watched not Lazarus rise from the dead. 
All of these things dealt with different aspects of our humanity, but they all dealt with the condition of the heart. Pentecost changed everything between God and man. We can now enter his throne room and be in his presence any time we call upon his name. When the Holy Spirit came, he, God gave us a piece of himself, a piece that can never be removed from us. He no longer needs to come in a cloud of smoke and fire with earthquakes shaking the ground. And we no, leaner, no longer need to fall in our face and tremble with fear because Jesus came and he bridged the gap. He took away that fear and he replaced it with our purpose. But Jesus is still here now. He's still here driving away the fear. And the Holy Spirit is still here giving us courage and boldness to press on. To press on in the things that God has called us to do. To press on in sharing Jesus' message with the lost. To press on in the ministries that God is birthing in your hearts right now. To press on in the ministries he's already given you. And to press on and be the voice for those suffering. Maybe some of us need a fresh tongue of fire to fall upon us today. Maybe some of us need the Holy Spirit to come and reignite that desire and fire within us. The Holy Spirit is more than willing and able to do it. I encourage you to cry out and ask him to stoke that fire, to give you his fresh breath of life. Because the power that happened at Pentecost is still alive and well today. The power that the Holy Spirit brought that day is still the same power that he brings to each believer who calls upon the name of Yahweh. The power of the name of Jesus still saves. The power of the name of Jesus still heals. The power of the name of Jesus still casts out fear. The power of the name of Jesus still resurrects life. The power of the Holy Spirit is far greater than any spirit of fear, any spirit of anxiety, any spirit of doubt, any spirit of uncertainty. This has never changed because our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if there is nothing else in this world that we can count on, we can know that we know that the name of Jesus saves we can know that our God never changes and that the power of the Holy Spirit will never fail us. We know God's love will never fail us. It will never give up on us. So church, we have to rise up and put on our superhero gear. We need to get our swords ready, make sure our tongues are sharp, and show the world what the power of the name of Jesus can really do. Because God interrupted this world, this whole world, for a reason. And we better stop and listen to what he is saying to us because he always has a plan. It is always for our good. It is never to harm us. We need to trust this with everything that is in us because if our God is with us, then who can stand against us? And if you have never called upon the name of Jesus, today is your day. It's not complicated. Jesus came to this earth. He died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again so that one day when you leave this earth, you may live in eternity in heaven with God, our creator. God created you. He loves you so much. There is nothing in your past, nothing in your future, nothing in your present that is beyond the reach of God's love. I urge you to call upon the name of Jesus and you will be instantly saved. It's not hard. A simple prayer, something like, Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again. I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. And that's it. The Holy Spirit is instantly there. All of heaven rejoices. You are made a fresh new creation. I beg you to call upon his name because he loves you and he wants that relationship. And if you say that prayer, please, please contact us, email us, 
call us, text us, message us, because we want to rejoice with you, because it is a joyous, glorious day when you call upon the name of Jesus. God loves you so much. He loves all of us so much. We are so loved by God. We are drenched in his mercy and his grace. And even as we are in difficult times and our hearts are heavy, our God will never fail us. He will work it out for our good. His interruptions are deep acts of love for us. There's never a moment of wasted. His love is immeasurable. Oh, church, how he loves us. Church, we need to get a hold of that. We need to hold on to it with everything that we have because the power of Pentecost is alive in every believer, everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus. We must rise up and walk in that power. Remember who you are, church. Remember, rise up and grab a hold of God's love for you. Use it as a weapon to drive out the darkness in this world. Don't be afraid. The power that the Holy Spirit brought to the first disciples on Pentecost overwhelmed them to the point where they had to work to act. That same power lives in you. Hold on to it, church. Hold on to it. Do not be silent anymore. Holy Spirit, draw us close to you. Fill us with the love of our Father. Show us how deep his affections are for us. Overwhelm us and flood us so that we may pour out your great love into this entire world so that we may rise up and not be silent and declare that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen.
turn to 918 in the back of our hymnals. Join with me in unison prayer. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come as holy fire and burn in us. Come as holy wind and cleanse us within. Come as holy light and lead us in the darkness. Come as holy truth and dispel our ignorance. Come as holy power and enable our weakness. Come as holy life and dwell in us. Convict us, convert us, consecrate us until we are set free from the service of ourselves to be your servants in this world. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Flood us with your presence. Overwhelm us. Let a fresh tongue of fire fall upon your church, Holy Spirit. Awaken your church. Breathe your fresh breath of life within us. Help us to walk in the boldness and the courage that you have given us. You came and you brought the power, the resurrection power. Spark it, fan it, flame it, so that we may go and declare that Jesus is Lord. That we may go into this world, that we may spread your love and your peace, that we may rise up and speak against the darkness, that we may forcefully, through your love, push back the darkness of this world, because this world is filled with believers and the light of Jesus lives in this world. Help us to do the work that you have called us to do. Lead us in the darkness so that we may shine brightly in this world. Dispel our ignorance and let us not turn a blind eye to things that we must stand up against. Let us be bold in talking and creating instances for those who have no way. Let us not be silent, but let justice rise up in us. And in our weakness, show your strength through us. Because we are not able to do these things in and of ourselves, but you are. Let us be at peace with our weakness so that your strength may come and overtake us and change this world. You have given us the power to change this world. Let us rise up and do that. Holy Spirit, fall upon us. Let us feel your presence right this moment. Let us feel that fire starting to grow hotter and hotter. Let us feel your breath running through us. Let us feel your stirring. Open our ears to be sensitive to the things that you are saying. Reveal your truth to us. Show us the direction in the way. Holy Spirit, be our comforter. Wrap your arms around so many who are grieving losses right now. Be with them and flood them with your presence because you are a gift for us in our time of need. Help us to draw close to you, to hold on to you with all that we have. For you love us so much that you desire to walk with us Help us to walk with you, not ahead of you or behind you or to the side of you, but with you. Let our steps be in step. Let our hearts be in heart. Let our breath be in breath with you. I lift up all those in this world that are suffering in so many different areas in their lives for so many different reasons, Lord. We don't understand we don't understand and we don't always see. And we're sorry, Lord, that we can't always see. 
but you are a mighty God who floods us with your mercy and your grace, and you forgive us of the things we do not know, but do not let us continue to walk in the darkness and open our eyes to see. For your church is a representative of you, and you are a God full of love, and we must flood this earth with your love. Help us, God. We need you. This world needs you. There is so much for those that are suffering from mental health issues, those suffering with finances, those suffering with sickness and illness, those suffering with broken families and broken hearts, those suffering and grieving. You are there, and we believe that you are there. And even though we don't understand, Lord, we will stand on your promises and we will believe that you are a God who works it out for all good. Everything in us, we will proclaim that and we will believe it and we will hold on to it with everything that we have because you will never fail us. Your word says you will never leave us and forsake us in the Holy Spirit. You are the evidence and proof of that that our God will never leave us, no matter how bad it may get or how heavy our hearts may be. Our God never leaves us. So we will rise up and stand on your word. We will rise up and speak your truths. We will rise up and pour our love out into this world. We will rise up and we will watch the power of our God Almighty change this entire world, all for the good. Father, we just bow to you because you are awesome. You are an awesome, great, loving God. And we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you will do. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name.